He's the former mayor of Seattle. He's got a story to tell about fish market redevelopment. And first of all, his night at the pictures. So let's roll the video. Thank you. For first time visitors to Seattle, the Pikes Place Market is a must see. However, the market is much more than just a tourist destination. A typical day at the market starts with music. And the sound of vendors vying for the best spots to sell their goods. No, not 37. Soon the air is filled with something very different, fish. Workers here say there is nowhere else quite like this market. People like the, the personalities in the market. I think uh, people want to get out of maybe suburbia a little bit and just see something unique and alive. You know, we create relationships down here. We're not just selling fish. We're like really honestly trying to connect with people and create relationships. And if they buy fish, that's, that's, that's awesome. The market's about incubating these smaller businesses and keeping it local. Jennifer Davis shows visitors the less explored sides of the Pikes Place Market. There's more to this place than fish, flowers, and food. There's also fundraising. There's fun. Um, every day is a different story out here. You Davis takes visitors to the market's underground gallery of stores, including this magic shop. She advises us not to miss the shops that run parallel to the market on Post Alley. Money raised by the tours goes to community projects like this home for seniors, all part of the continuing effort to give back to the city. We are called the soul of Seattle and for many reasons, you know, again, you meet different people every day. Um, everyone's from all different walks of life, even folks that work here. Um, but just hearing each person's story. So everyone here either makes their own goods or grow their own goods or are their small startups, you know? So everyone really has a great story about how their business came to be. And it's just really great to see the, the heart and the passion that goes into everything people do here. That's a really nice booth here. Yeah, I like the belly. That passion is also on Chef Chester Girl's shopping list as he hunts for prized ingredients to prepare for patrons at his nearby restaurant. What's in the market is what you'll see on the plates here and uh, we like to try to get everything fresh and as much produce and, and product from the market as possible. It's the, the best thing for a chef. It's like having a grocery store right below us. In the middle of our lunch rush we can run downstairs and grab whatever we need. And as much as the market has changed in its 100-year history, that direct connection between the producer and consumer remains at the very heart of the Seattle institution. Patrick Ottman, CNN, Seattle. Well, I want to join uh, Graham and uh, Matthew and others who have congratulated you uh, on your stamina. You've had a long and arduous day and I hope that this will be a nice a finish for you, both uh, my keynote not going the full 30 minutes, I hope, and uh, also uh, the panel discussion about this wonderful, iconic uh, Sydney treasure. I thought it would be useful for you to see some pictures of the Pike Place Market. Uh, when David reached out to me and asked me to come, um, talk about fish markets, I told him, I don't know anything about fish markets. And he said, well, we'd like to hear a little bit about the Pike Place Market uh, and wh what, what has happened there, what it is, what it means to your community, uh, and what some of the possibilities might be for the Sydney Fish Market. So I will uh, share that with you from a couple of perspectives. First, let me talk. I had a chance to visit the Sydney Fish Market yesterday, and Graham was kind enough to give a tour, uh, and uh, we, we sampled some of the, uh, some of the wares there. As I walked into it, before I uh, connected with uh, Graham and, and Donald, who you'll hear from later, uh, I, I saw the one person I know in Sydney, and that is the fellow who drove me in from the airport. Uh, he was there uh, on a break grabbing uh, a bite to eat. So as a politician, meeting a constituent like that so far from home, the one person who I possibly would recognize, I felt very much at home in this, in this uh, gathering place. And a market is a gathering place. It isn't just a place where commerce uh, is conducted, but it is a place where people meet one another, uh, develop relationships, and 
uh, and perhaps uh, much more. So, um, so let me tell you a little bit of the history of the Pike Place Market uh, and Seattle. Uh, Seattle burned down in 1889, uh, and as it began to rebuild, there was one of those pesky global depressions. So there was no capital to rebuild the city. Uh, and fortunately, uh, there was some gold discovered in the Klondike, and Seattle became the place that provisioned uh, the, uh, the hopeful miners as they uh, left uh, for the Klondike. Uh, and so by the early 1900s, uh, we were growing by leaps and bounds. Between 1890 and 1900, we doubled in population. And we developed a wholesale uh, market for produce. The farmers would come in. Most of the farmers were immigrants, uh, either from Europe uh, or from Japan. Uh, and they were uh, bringing their goods in to sell to uh, uh, commissioners, they were called. Uh, middlemen. And unfortunately, the middlemen turned out not to be the most honest uh, of uh, uh, brokers. They would give a price one day, the farmers would bring the produce the next day and be paid substantially less. This left the farmers unsatisfied. Um, they would greatly increase the price from what they had paid to the retail consumer, and that ultimately was their undoing because they raised the price of onions in a manner that was just unacceptable to the customers uh, of uh, Seattle, the retail customers. They raised it from one penny to 10 cents. And there was a great backlash. And in 1907, there was a new city council member uh, who discovered that the city had a decade earlier authorized a farmer's market, but had never acted on it. He wanted to make a name for himself. His name was Thomas Ravel. Uh, and so he got the city council to authorize a farmer's market. On August 17th of 1907, eight farmers brought their wagons in to Pike Place, not Pike's Place, like the CNN reporter, but Pike Place, which is the name of the street, uh, and, uh, and sold their goods. Uh, there were some interesting stories of that first day. First story was that the uh, middlemen threatened the farmers. Any farmer who shows up and sells directly to the consumer, we won't do business with in the future. So it was risky for those eight farmers. Uh, one of the farmers, a Japanese American, uh, was immediately set upon, not in a bad way, but somebody jumped onto the back of his wagon and started throwing the produce to people without bothering to collect money. A second farmer, uh, some of the uh, society women uh, who were there shopping, took over his wagon and asked him to step aside. When he came back, he had a jar of silver coins that amounted to about seven or eight dollars, which was far more than he felt he would have sold them for had they actually asked him what the price would be for an ear of corn. So he felt pretty satisfied. The next day was a Sunday, so there was no market, but Monday there were 20 farmers. And by the end of the week, there were 70. So clearly, they had uh, found a, a connection both with the farmers, the producers, uh, and with the retail customers. Within three months, the first permanent building was up. I cannot imagine what the building permit process was like uh, in the city of Seattle back then. But within uh, uh, three months, November, the first permanent building uh, was built. The complex of buildings, about a dozen buildings formed the center of the market, uh, was all completed by about 1920. In 1922, there was a similar problem with fish. And, uh, and so the city fish market was added to the farmer's market. Also in the 1920s, we had a little experiment in America called prohibition. And all of a sudden, the fruit uh, juice producers were very popular. Uh, particularly the older juice that had had some time to, uh, to age. Uh, and so the market did very well during Prohibition. The market survived uh, the uh, Great Depression very well because consumers very much wanted value, farmers very much wanted customers, uh, and so the market continued to do very well through uh, the 1930s. However, by the 1940s, these buildings were beginning to deteriorate a bit. 
The, uh, the market was deteriorating, and I'm talking about the customer market, in that uh, after World War II, people started to move to the suburbs. Uh, the car became much more uh, uh, important. People were willing to travel longer distances. And they had this new contraption called the supermarket. So the market fell on some hard times. It became an interesting cultural place, a collection of artists and uh, communists and socialists and Bolsheviks started to gather. And at the corner of the market where we have the iconic uh, uh, clock, people would use that much like the London Speaker's Corner. Uh, they would get on a soapbox and talk about the issues that they were interested in. There were, as I said, artists and, and politically active people and some people who were just plain nuts. In the early 1960s, the city fathers decided that this place was nefarious, uh, the buildings were in bad repair, it was giving Seattle a bad name, and it wasn't modern and up to date, uh, that we could do much better. We could be much more like Los Angeles and uh, have a large parking garage or uh, put in uh, towers or, or something other than this contraption of uh, of buildings, old deteriorating buildings. And so by the end of the 1960s, the mayor, and this wasn't the first mayor who tried to do away with the market. The first mayor who tried to do away with the market was in 1924, Edwin Brown, Doc Brown was his name. And he came up with a sketch of a really, really ugly replacement, save the market single-handedly. Uh, but in the 60s, the entire political establishment decided that it was time for the market to go. The people of Seattle uh, reacted to that, and a number of activists and organizations came together. The Friends of the Market was formed uh, and uh, collected signatures, over 50,000 signatures, and put it on the ballot. And in 1971, by over 60 percent yes vote, the people of Seattle said, no, we're going to save this market. The city and the market quickly made up uh, and tried to figure out then, what do we do with this? How do we continue to be true to this market, but also make it a place that's a, attractive and a positive thing for the city? And so over the next uh, 10 years, the city invested some $135 million to uh, replace roofs, plumbing, electrical. And we did so in a way of trying not to make it look new and contemporary because people liked the feel of the old market. And so they were very successful in keeping it authentic, if you will. Now there are some differences between the Pike Market and the Sydney Fish Market. Fish were added later. There is no wholesale fish activity uh, at the Pike Place Market. Seattle is the home of the North Pacific fishing fleet. If you've ever seen the American television show De Deadliest Catch, those are all ships that uh, are um, provisioned and uh, home ported in Seattle. There's some 10 billion pounds of seafood that America brings in each year. Nearly half of that comes through Seattle. So the, the wholesale activity is huge, and it takes place at Fisherman's Terminal, it takes place with a huge company called Trident Seafood that is headquartered in Seattle. So that's separate and apart from the market. Um, and similarly, of course, the wholesale of the, uh, of the fruits and vegetables isn't part of the market. It is directly farmer to consumer. The uh, market also has artisans and craftspeople. Uh, there is a, a strong community of Hmong, Hmong women who grow flowers and sell at the market. We have about 240 stalls, and there is a drawing every day for who gets what stall, so that uh, people have different uh, access to the best spots to sell their goods. The market community has become quite diverse in its activities. There are no chain stores that are allowed except one, Starbucks, and that's because it's the first Starbucks, so it wasn't a chain when it located there. And a little story, Starbucks' original logo was a mermaid, 
Minerva is her name. And in the original logo, Minerva was bare-breasted. As Starbucks has grown as an international company, they have become more uh, modest. But that original store has the original logo, and I think that's a big, big part of the draw of that store. The, um, there are lines of people waiting to get in there. The market also was home to a number of residents, many of them of low or moderate income. And we, as a community, did not want to displace those folks. So there was a strong commitment to provide the social uh, network necessary for folks to be able to survive uh, and uh, do well in that neighborhood. There is low-income housing that has been subsidized by the city and others. There is a strong foundation that raises private funds uh, in order to um, support the market activity. The, um, the market again needed refreshing when I was mayor. And we had a conversation about that and eventually I proposed, and we're gonna see a picture in a minute, um, a $75 million levy. Again, we didn't want to change the market. We didn't want to make it a new place. We wanted to fix the roofs, the plumbing, the electrical, uh, make it healthy and safe uh, and ready for another generation. 2008 November, you might recall there had been about six weeks of the worst economic headlines in my lifetime. Uh, and yet 60% of the voters voted to tax themselves throughout our city uh, to support the market and to refresh it, even though they weren't going to see anything new or different. But they understood the value of investing uh, in our market. So there's a strong community ownership uh, of the market. Um, after visiting the Sydney market, there are just a couple of thoughts that I have. I, uh, it's a wonderful place. The energy was very, very clear walking in. The access to the water is something that we're jealous of because our access from our market uh, was cut off by a 1950s double-decked highway, which fortunately is going to be torn down uh, in the next couple of years, and we'll be able to reconnect uh, that market to the waterfront. So um, yesterday when I got back, I was somewhat, I was inspired so I told you the crack pots used to uh, stand by that, uh, by that clock. There's one of them. That's me announcing the 2008 um, levy. I think it was about half past noon. Um, but I put on Facebook as I got back from that lunch and that tour of the market, I asked friends, what was it that made the Pike Market special to them? And these are some of the answers uh, that I got. The pig, there's a pig there, a bra big brass pig. It's a piggy bank. And people donate funds, and those funds then go to the social services. And a, something like $10,000 a year of change is, uh, is donated that way. The fresh local foods, uh, that we, the people, saved the market and restored it. Uh, again, the people. That it's a hard question. There's so much there uh, that People have memories of it that uh, go beyond a specific building or a specific vendor. That the atmosphere, the flowers, uh, the history, it's a large economic driver. It is 10, 10 million people a year visit that market. That's second in Washington State to Mount Rainier. So when you can compete fairly effectively with a 14,400 foot semi-dormant volcano, that's not bad. Um, the, uh, the statue of the uh, uh, anonymous politician standing at a, at a podium, I think that might have been a jab at me, uh, the buskers, there are uh, numerous spots for local street musicians, um, and they're not only not uh, uh, shooed off, they're encouraged, they're allowed to uh, uh, have some very prime locations uh, in the market. The view, uh, the old mayor, the uh, signs, the iconic view of that, the gum wall. The gum wall I have mixed feelings about because I chaired the Board of Health uh, for many years. But the gum wall, literally people come and they stick their gum on the wall. And it's been measured. It has the same amount of gum as 12 average elementary schools would have underneath the desks. Uh, so that's apparently quite an attraction. There's a cheese factory. 
uh, right across the street, uh, Pike Place, from the main market itself. And rather than have the cheese simply sold, the window is alongside where the cheese is being manufactured. And it is uh, a very popular thing for people to stand and watch the cheese being, I don't know what the term is, curdled. Uh, but it, it, it gets people involved. Uh, somebody has a very special memory of being, uh, of being married there. The, the mix of fishmongers, produce, uh, flowers, crafts, arts. It's a very rich uh, mix of activities and people, very diverse. Uh, and one of the things that I think people like about it are the smells. There is a chaos about the market, uh, huge crowds. You have to elbow your way through. Uh, and it is that chaos and that energy that I think draws people and attracts people. And part of that is the, is the incredibly rich, sometimes uh, perhaps overripe uh, smells that you get uh, from, uh, from some of the activities the history of it that is connected to uh, people through, uh, throughout our area. These comments came in within about 30 minutes of me posting that. So um, it struck a nerve. People really feel strongly about that connection. And so the fact that you have this wonderful market that has attracted people uh, now for uh, the last generation, I think is a strong starting point and I think then as you think about the future and how it's going to better serve and perhaps how you can improve access to it. I walked there yesterday from the Shangri-La Hotel. Walking there took 45 minutes because I got desperately lost once. The way back it was about 30 minutes. It was a, actually a fairly easy walk for someone who's not familiar with, uh, with, your Sydney, with uh, Sydney at all. So um, I, would, uh, not, I would not say that access is horrible, but I think wayfinding could be, uh, could be improved. And I think it might help if you made it not just a destination, but also a through point. The Pike Market is a great place for people to, if they're going north and south, they can walk through the market and enjoy uh, all, of the, uh, all of the vendors and pick up some flowers or uh, produce or fish or meat. Uh, or if they're going east-west, if they're going from the main downtown area to the waterfront, it provides a, uh, a, a thoroughfare, a throughway for people walking that dir direction. So as the Bay Precinct uh, projects move along, as you create more destinations, think of the market as uh, not a barrier but as creating a way through where they can enjoy the market and then enjoy additional destinations uh, as well. Uh, thank you again for your care for this great city. It is an honor to be asked to come and, uh, and share with you some of our stories. Thank you.